day is going to be the happiest day of my entire life. I am the luckiest guy in the world. I've always wanted to marry my best friend, and I'm so glad that that dream did come true. She's my best friend, and I could not have asked for anything else in, in an eternal I first noticed Christy in Sunday school at our young single adult ward. He just caught my eye because he is just so attractive. She's beautiful. I, I definitely, that was one of the most obvious things that I noticed about Christy. She's, she's absolutely beautiful. Anybody that knows Griffin notices that he's a perfect gentleman. Christy has a great laugh. She has a great smile and she really likes to just have fun. Griffin never needs to be the center of attention. He doesn't have to have solos, he doesn't have to um, have the limelight. Three things I admire about Christy. First one would be compassion, definitely. Well, one thing I admire about Griffin is he has a desire to improve beyond anyone I've ever met before. 
Um, second thing I would have to say about Christy would be her integrity. She has a commitment to the truth. She has, she holds to her values. Another thing I admire about Griffin is that he's always punctual. This is a problem in my family. One of the first things you're going to um, notice about Christy when you meet her is that she's a very fun person. She likes to do a lot of fun, exciting things. One other thing I really admire about Griffin is how responsible he is. This could kind of go along with how great of a memory he has, but he's pretty much the reason why um, the wedding is happening at all. Um, besides being the groom, he is one of the main planners. The most impressive thing about Christy is her spirit. If I could describe Griffin in three words, it'd be perfect gentleman, supportive, and in tune. Christy in three words. <laughs> Practically perfect princess. <laughs>
it just felt like a part of me was staying behind and I, I, I told myself that, um, that this must be love because I've never felt that way before. If you knew how happy you are making me, I've never thought I love anyone so much. Feels like home to me. Feels like home to me. Feels like a home way back where I come from. Feels like home to me. Feels like home to me. Feels like a home way back where I belong. Feels like. To tears, remember someday. The proposal was wonderful. Griffin had told me to save a day. I showed up to Christie's house um, and appeared on my doorstep wearing a pinstriped suit, looking mighty attractive. And I presented her with a pink rose. That was symbolic of the first time that I fell in love with Christie. And then he brought a recipe that we've been wanting to cook for a long time since that is our favorite thing to do with one another's cook. And then afterwards I um, informed her that she would want to get dressed up because we were going to go somewhere. Then while we were driving he pretended like he made wrong turns and I was like, where are we going? I surprised her to tell her that we were going to go to the Salt Lake Temple together. And so um, it was wonderful. We arrived and it was such an incredible learning experience. We learned so much. Neither of us had ever, ever done a, a live session at the Salt Lake Temple. Um, at the end of the session, we were sitting in a room with lots of nice couches, and there was only one couch left, and that was one in the far back corner, so we went and sat down together. And in the rear of the celestial room, there is a ceiling room that's connected to the celestial room. So we were in the um, we were talking, sharing with one another, and it was wonderful. And all of a sudden I realized that Griffin was not paying attention to anything I was saying anymore. And in that ceiling room, um, for the majority of the time we were in the slush room, we had people inside. I tried to get his attention, and I was like, hello. And he just totally disregarded that I had said anything. And he was like, let's, let's go in this room over here. As soon as those people had left, um, I realized it was a good time to go. and. Uh, take Christine to that room. There's, there's a little place to kneel in there and he, he knelt down and um, he asked me to kneel across from him. I asked Christine to close her eyes and when she was closing her eyes I, I took out what was in my pocket. And so I closed my eyes and I put my head down and um, he, I heard some, some rummaging in plastic. And, um, and it was a white rose, just actually the tip of a white rose, the bud and a little bit of the stem. I realized it was happening right then. Tied to the white rose was a um, engagement ring with a white silk ribbon. I was expecting him to propose and I opened my eyes and um, instead he's holding this, this pure white rose and um, with this beautiful silk white ribbon attached to the rose. And at first she didn't see the ring at all and she just thought it was a really nice gesture. I'll, I'll never forget, he, he said, Chrissy, will you be my wife and marry me for time and all eternity? And it's kind of like those words you never expect to hear for reals in your life. Very quickly she started to cry and uh, it was a very tender moment. Um, I uh, took the ring off the ribbon put it on her finger. I actually tried to put it on my right hand, but I was like, oh, this is the right hand to put it on. And I 
said yes. Never regretted it since. And I don't ever remember being as happy as I was as I was in that moment. I want to tell you, Christy, that I love you so much. Griffin, I can't begin to explain the joy that you brought to my life. I am so grateful for you. I am the luckiest guy in the world. Just knowing that I can be with you forever is the most comforting, peaceful thing. Thank you for marrying me. Thank you for making me the happiest guy in the world.